Hello, it's Thursday. We are continuing to read from the book of Romans, chapter 1. Today it will be verses 26 through 32. This is Thursday, July the 13th, and this is the Greenbrier Valley Church of the Nazarene with your daily devotion. Here is the Lord's Word from Romans 1, 26 through 32. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the the due penalty for their error. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain knowledge of God, So God gave them over to a depraved mind, so that they do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these things, but also approve of those who practice them. And that is the word of the Lord. The article today, Because of Sin, God Judges, by Karen Henner. Here's what Karen writes. William was rebellious. The president of Moody Bible Institute received an anguished call from a pastor begging for his son to be enrolled in the school. Although sympathetic, the president informed the pastor that he ran an institute, not a reform school. Yet the father was persistent, and the president eventually relented on the condition that the son would come to see him daily and would follow the rules. Many years later, a professor at that same school was alone in his classroom making lesson plans when he began writing his testimony in the form of a poem on the back of an envelope. He took the poem to the music director of the school who put it to music. The two men then sang together the hymn, Al Calvary. The writer of the poem, of course, was William R. Newell, 1868-1956 the rebellious student. He had met regularly with the president and eventually accepted Christ. Today's passage describes unregenerate humanity. Yet there is grace and mercy at the cross for those who, like William, repent and turn their lives over to Jesus. Prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace you offered at Calvary. And the hymn is At Calvary by William R. Newell. By God's word, at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I spurned, till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. And from 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation. And that is your daily devotion for Thursday, July the 13th. Have a blessed day.